This is a great problem. Now, if you just did this problem and didn't do very well on it, that probably doesn't make you feel any better. But I've got to say it again. This is really a great problem. And the reason I say that is it makes you calculate four different ways of estimating a value. And so you get a, a real complete survey of all these different methods from calculus that you've been learning. So there's lots of useful information that we're going to need off on the right to handle each of the separate sections. Overall, we have a function. We know it's twice differentiable. We know its value at a particular point, namely uh, x equals 1. We know its second derivative at that same point. And then we're given lots of first derivative selected values from this table. And in all four parts of the problem, we're being asked to do essentially the same thing, namely approximate f of 1.4. So where we start is with a tangent line approximation. f of 1.4 equals f at the known value, in this case 1, plus the slope at that time times the distance away that you are from the known point. So what values do we have to fill in here? We know that f of 1 is 15 and f prime of 1 is 8. So putting that together we get 15 plus 8 times 0 0.4, that's going to be 15 plus 3.2. We've got 18.2 is our first answer. All right, let's try another method of approximation. B, they want f of 1.4. Well, we know that, now I should have written back here, that f of 1.4 is approximately equal to this. We know that f of 1.4 can be written using the fundamental theorem of calculus, f at some known point, plus the integral from the known point out to the point of interest of the derivative of the function. This is exact. It's when we have to use the midpoint Riemann sum to approximate this value that we get the approximation. So, using midpoint Riemann sum to approximate. All right, let's see if we can make sense of what they're asking for. Let's call this A. So A equals what? All right, let's go to that midpoint Riemann sum approximation. It just says you break it up. In this case, they ask us to break it up into two equal widths. So from 1 to 1 1.2 and from 1 1.2 to 1 1.4. And then for the height of each of the rectangles, you use the height at the midpoint of that width. So at 1.1 and at 1.3 in this case. All right, so this is an approximation. Again, I sometimes use these two uh, squiggly uh, bars for an approximation. I sometimes use dot over an equal sign just to show you that there are uh, multiple ways to represent approximation. At any rate, our width in each case is 0 0.2 and our height at 1.1 and then our height at 1.3 are what we're using. What's the height at 1.1? It's 10. 
what's the height at 1.3 it's 13 and so we get for a uh, what is that 23 times 0.2 And what will that be? That will be a 4.6, won't it? Let's see, 23, yeah, 4.6. So we have f of 1.4 is approximately equal to, what was f of 1? f of 1 up here is 15. And so we're taking 15 plus 4.6. and we get 19.6. Part C asks us to use Euler's method and again two steps of equal size. So Euler's method will first find uh, f of 1.2 use that in our approximation of f of 1.4 so f of 1.2 equals f at that known value at 1 plus f prime at 1 times the step size 0.2 and what's that going to give us again I'm not being careful here this is the approximation well f of 1 as it has been in the previous approximations, f of 1 is known to be 15, f prime of 1 is 8, so now we have f of 1.2 as 15 plus 8 times 0 0.2 is going to be 1.6, and that's 16.6. .6. Now we're going to use this information to go on to calculate f of 1.4. Think of Euler's method, by the way, as a series of successive tangent line approximations. So here we have to use the approximate value we had for f of 1.2 plus our understanding of the derivative value at 1.2 and again times the distance 0.2. We've just moved the whole process that we had on the previous line up uh, a notch or over a notch from 1 over to 1.2. So what have we got here? f of 1.2 again we have to use the approximation that we had from above. We're using that approximation 16.6 f prime of 1.2, now that we're given in the table, so we'll write that as 12. And so 12 times 0.2, let's, here, let's get this together, 16.6 plus 12 times 0.2 is 2.4, and that's going to yield uh, 19 flat, isn't it? Yeah, 19.0. All right, one more method to try, and that is the second degree Taylor series. And so F at 1.4. Again, the Taylor series just lets us expand about a known point. And so here we need F of 1.4 is going to be F of 1 plus F prime at 1 times uh, the distance away that's going to be 0.4 plus f double prime at 1 times the distance away squared over 2 factorial and it stops there we truncate all right let's see if we can figure out these numbers f1 again 15. F prime of 1 we said is 8. F double prime of 1 is given as 20. Okay, so let's continue 
D up here. And so we have 15 plus 8 times 0 0.4 is going to be 3.2. Uh, okay, so what is 0 0.4 squared? That's going to be 0.16. So we have 20 times 0 0.16 all over 2. 20 over 2, I'm going to simplify as 10, 10 times 0.16 is 1.6. So I have 15 plus 3.2 plus 1.6, and that's going to be 18.2, 19.8. All right, let's again go back and clarify that these are all approximations. Okay, and so just to be on the safe side, I'm even going to note here that this is f of 1.4, and that it's approximately equal to. Okay, now, as I said, you've got a chance to review four different methods of approximating values. The only thing I regret about this problem is that they don't tell us what the actual function is so that we could compare all four methods, approximations, to the exact answer. But such is life.